Hey, good evening. It's Pastor Mary. Well, glad to be with you. It is Tuesday, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Uh, I'm a big Star Wars fan, and um, I've been wearing my Star Wars shirt today. Let me see if you can see it. See, it says Star Wars Rogue One. That was one of the movies of recent years. Um, I became a Star Wars fan when I was in high school, and I actually saw the first Star Wars movie five times. It's number four now uh, in the sequence of the nine. And so anyway, I love May the 4th. Uh, may the 4th be with you, and Lutherans and Episcopals would answer, and also with you. So since nobody's on here, but the ones who see this later, you'll see that. And I may say it again for those who get on. Hopefully, somebody remembers. I probably should have put a note out to say, hey, I'm on tonight. Come join me. So, but, um, and so I guess that brings up something too. So we've been doing this for over a year. Um, actually now we're, uh, going on 14 months. And, uh, the question is, uh, are people still interested in, in the devotion? So if you would give me a yes, no, maybe, um, I'm planning on doing them for a while, a while longer. The question is, will I do Tuesday through Friday? Um, as we look to reopen, um, we may be starting to have Wednesday night worship. Uh, but it's all in the works. Nothing is set yet. There's conversation happening, but nothing to share. Nothing is, you know, there's no phase one. There, that's We're working on that. But um, so as that comes about, though, uh, that will probably change Wednesday nights. We'll see if we can do uh, have that on live. Um, and I may go to uh, one other night of devotion, but set the night. And then um, we'll keep Friday night fun up for now. But I just would like to hear from you all if, uh, if this is something you'd like to see continue. So I know, you know, after we don't have it Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it's really easy to forget that we're on here Tuesday. So, hey, April, good evening. I'm glad you're on here. I've been a few, talking a few minutes without people, and so it's nice to have, have you join me. Um, <clears throat> I hope you're doing well. I'm glad that you're watching. I really appreciate you uh, joining me. I guess what I'll do, I'll go back to putting a note up on <clears throat> maybe Monday night to say uh, mark your calendars for Tuesday. Come and join me. I know Bill and Kathy Gates, who usually get on, they have switched, are switching over their internet because uh, their daughter Julie told me. So I know that's why they haven't been on because um, Kathy had been on a trip and I really miss them because usually they're the first ones on. They usually jump on right away. So hang on one second, I gotta take a drink. So anyway, <clears throat> um, for those of you in Georgia, I would expect you've had some rain this afternoon like we did. Uh, Laura, hey, good. Yeah, I figured, well, I figured if you're on, hey, Martha, good evening. I figure if you're on April, uh, that Laura's probably with you. Laura or Don. So I'm glad you're both there. And Martha, I'm glad you're on here too. Great to have you. Um, so I'll say what I shared at the end for those who uh, get on. But anyway, so devotions tonight, Christ in our home. Uh, Tuesday, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you, Star Wars. As I said, I'm a big fan. And the scripture tonight is from Isaiah 32, uh, 16 to 20. Hey, Peggy, you're back. Welcome back. Uh, I had heard that you were on your way back on Sunday, so I'm glad you... I'm, I would hope you had a great trip, and I'm glad you're back, and um, we're glad to have you on here. I think you were on while you were gone, but I, I can't say that for sure. Because I know you've been gone a couple weeks. I was just trying to remember. I was thinking you were on one night. But I could be wrong. So, okay. So, it's verses 16 to 20. From chapter 32 in Isaiah. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness. And righteousness abide in the fruitful field. The effect of righteousness will be peace. And the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. The forest will disappear completely and the city will be utterly laid low. Happy are those, 
Happy will you be who sow beside every stream, who let the ox and the donkey range freely. Okay. Hey, Peggy and Cheryl, good evening. So the scripture that the writer um, focuses on is this one. The effect of righteousness will be peace, verse 17. Now let me check because I think we changed devotion writers. We did. Okay. So our devotion writer from now till May 15th is Gary Westgard. Gary is a retired ELCA pastor living in Yankton, South Dakota. He is married to Vivian. They have two children and two grandsons. Gary served congregations in Laurel, Nebraska, and at Gayville slash Meckling, Vermilion, and Watertown, South Dakota. He enjoys walking with Vivian, reading, writing, watching movies, and taking a nap after lunch. Oh, he's a guy after my own heart. I mean, I, I love all those things and baking and cooking. Uh, so, hey, Janet, good evening. So, our author is a retired ELCA pastor in South Dakota, right? He's in South. I want to make sure. Yep. South Dakota. Yep. Gary. Okay. So, this is what Gary writes about Isaiah 32. Often the last words we hear spoken in worship are, The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Then go in peace, serve the Lord. Among many other aspects of worship, we have been led by the Spirit to confess our sin and have been declared forgiven. There is no condemnation. Nothing separates us from God. Righteousness means being in a right relationship with others and with God. We are righteous because God says so. The result of such righteousness, such deliverance from condemnation, is peace, unless, unless our newfound peace doesn't carry forward into our daily life. Counted righteous by God, we are now empowered to set our other relationships right. Relationships with family, friends, neighbors, maybe even self. To have the tough conversation, to make the apology, to regain trust, to forgive ourselves. Usually the first step, which is receiving God's gift of righteousness, is easier than the second, which is setting right our relationship with others. But the second is necessary if we want to know the peace spoken over us at the close of worship. And the prayer is, Lord God, help me find peace in you with my neighbor and in myself in Jesus' name. Amen. And the prayer concern is for peacemakers around the world. I want to check. I think Laura said, oh, sometimes April gets on by herself. Good, April. I'm really glad you do that. I'm, I'm really, really glad. It's always nice to see all of you on here. So I really like this. Um, I, I like his writing. It's always interesting to hear the different voices to me of the different authors because they write for two weeks. They write two weeks devotions. And so since this is three months, then you hear from... Um, you hear from six different writers. And so I always enjoy seeing their style of writing and, and what they bring up. But I really, I really like this about um, making peace with your neighbor, receiving God's gift of, of righteousness, which is because God, God makes us that in our relationship. It's a right relationship with God and with other people. Um, and I, I would totally agree. I think, um, at least for me personally, one of the toughest things is if I, if I've done something to upset someone or, um, you know, or if I'm angry at somebody and, and I share that, I, I just, I don't feel settled until I work things out with that person. It's like, it weighs on me and, um, I just, it just is very, very tough. I, keeps me awake. Um, oh, hey, Janet, you're with your mom. Hey, well, that's so nice you got on from New Jersey. You said it's your mom's 101st birthday. Well, happy birthday to your mom. That's great. I hope the weather's good there, and I hope you're having a great visit. I'm so glad you're there. That's great. And thanks for joining us tonight. That's great. So, anyway, I don't know how it is for you, um, but I, I, I mean, I don't. I think there, there's, I think most people don't really enjoy confrontation. There are a few people, their personality is such that they enjoy confrontation. In fact, I think there's some people that that's, that's pretty much at the forefront of their personality is to be that way. I, I get, that wears me down. I mean, that gets old and gets hard. Um, cause it, I don't want to seek peace at all costs. But I want to seek a right relationship with people and with God. And I'm, 
you know, I try to find ways to do that. But I mean, everybody's imperfect and we all do things. I do things. I've done things unintentionally that I had no idea hurt somebody. I remember one time I had a member of the of a church I served at and um, her husband had been going through something it was, and the church was pretty large. We worshiped at that time around 250 people a week. So it was very, very busy. And, you know, we were, and our boys were little, they were a lot younger and it was just a very busy time in our lives. And, um, I remember I ran into this woman, uh, leaving Target and I was talking to her and she said to me, well, she, and I was glad she told me because I really, I would rather somebody tell me they're upset with me and, and then we find a way to work it out than just to carry it around and not talk to me. Because I've had that happen too. And that's, that to me, that's far worse. But anyway, she just said, well, I'm upset with you because you never really got back with me about my husband. And I felt horrible, just horrible because I just forgot. It wasn't intentional. I just forgot in the busyness and I didn't see them very often and they I they just fell off my radar and I just I apologize but I felt so bad about that and you know I don't I really had to work on um if there's things I've done wrong even when I've been forgiven um and I, she couldn't really say that then she was you know she was being honest with what she was dealing with but I mean I always felt bad about that but um, there's just small things that I've done that I, you know, I wish I hadn't done. And, and even after I had reconciled it, there was times when I just feel bad about it, you know, and boy, that's a hard way to live, to carry, carry stuff around, even when you've been forgiven for it. And I really had to learn to forgive myself and even because well, there's times, like I said, we all do things wrong and we hurt each other intentionally or unintentionally. Hey, good evening, good evening, Phyllis. I'm so glad you're on here. And, but my problem is, was that even after people had forgiven me or, I think it's more when it hasn't been resolved, when it wasn't worked out. Um, like I, when I was in my 20s, I would dog sit. I loved to watch dogs and it was, I don't know how I got started doing that, but I would occasionally dog sit and there was this really nice couple and they had a huge Great Dane and I, the Great Dane was a sweet dog. And uh, I dog sitted for them three or four different times and everything went really, really well. And they they said, oh, you know, and they had this really lovely house and they're like, you know, you're welcome to have people over. You wanna have a party? I mean, I would never have done that. But they said, oh, you can have people over. So I had people over, we had just a nice evening, you know, nothing crazy. Just dinner, hanging out, it was really nice. But I made the mistake, big mistake. I went to church the next morning and I left the garbage out where the dog could get get at it. And when they came home, there wasn't any damage, but the garbage was all over the floor. Oh my gosh. They were so disappointed in me. And you know, I beat myself up about that for years. Like not all the time, but it would come back in my brain. Good evening, Susan. And I would feel so bad. I'm like, why did I do something that stupid? Why didn't I just put the trash away or, or take the trash out? Why did I leave it? Why didn't I think about the dog? Well, then I lived on a farm. Our dogs lived outside it. You know, the dog had always been good. I didn't think there'd be a problem, but man, I beat myself up about it. I just, you know, I just beat myself up about it. And um, I think it's because I never had contact with them again. And, you know, I said I was sorry, but I, I just, you know, it was a small thing, but I felt so bad because I could have, I knew better and I should have done better. And I, I just think it's tough sometimes to, you know, try to recon get reconciled because it's like sometimes time has gone for so long and you haven't worked things out. And, and sometimes, you know, we're like, well, they need to take the first step because they were wrong and I'm not going to take the first step. And, and yet I know that I, I've had to um, just say, you know what? I don't care. I just want to have a relationship with this person. Um, I had a big fight with my parents. Also, in my early, this was in my early 20s. A big fight. It was over really, I thought nothing. They were upset with me because um, I, I went out one night. I let my brother, he had his girlfriend over while they were gone. He was 
18 or 19 years old. I didn't think it was a big deal. They got really mad at me about it. Uh, I went back to college. It was in the summer and we didn't talk for like two or three months. And, um, and I was really upset about it. I was really mad. And, uh, but I just, I decided, you know what? I, I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to have to eat it because I don't want to not talk to my parents over this. And I still felt that I didn't do anything wrong, but I just, so I went home, I finally went home one weekend and, um, you know, we moved on, but it was never really talked about or worked through or anything. And that stuff is just really tough. I mean, you just kind of, I'm confessing to you all tonight, these small things in my life, but you know, I used to really let those bother me and I really had to work on it and say, Hey, it's enough. You've been forgiven by God. You know what you did. Don't do it again. You know, work through things and let it go. You know, the, I love that Frozen song, Let It Go, Let It Go, because sometimes I need to sing it to let things go. Sometimes we can just hang on to things and hang on to things and not let them go. And is it really worth it? Is it really worth it what it does to us? I will tell you no. I will say no, it's really not worth it. Um, so... Um, I just, you know, encourage you in your own life, if you need to feel forgiveness, you know, just confess to God, God forgives you. And then let, let that forgiveness be enough because sometimes we can think, well, I still got to beat myself up and we need to stop doing that. We need to let God's forgiveness fill us and let go of things and seek forgiveness and seek reconciliation and work towards that real peace with God and with one another. So, um, it's interesting though, talking about these things tonight because they don't, they used to really bother me, but you know, and yes, that was a long time ago, but I will say they bothered me when I would think about them. Now the one with the lady from church was mm, 12 years ago or so, but I mean, it's easy to let those things make us feel really bad about ourselves. And, and I just think that's really not what God wants for us. And but to find ways to work through things and to have a relationship with, with God and with one another. So I just want to encourage you about that tonight. And Janet, you being with your mom reminds me, um, I was watching the very end of the news tonight and, uh, and cause they always have the good stories then. And, uh, both NBC and CBS had stories about moms, about, you may have heard about the woman who was going to Hawaii and didn't know she was pregnant did not know she was pregnant and gave birth on the plane at 29 weeks. And fortunately, there was a medical doctor on the plane and there was three NIC ICU nurses, which is the like the neonatal where the babies go. Three nurses from Kansas City on the plane and they all helped her deliver the baby. And they had showed a picture of them at, in Hawaii and they all met up with her. The three nurses had gone to have a a nurse's time away. Hey, Paula. And, um, and the doctor, I guess was I don't, going to Hawaii. And so they helped deliver the baby on the plane and the baby's doing fine, but the baby will have to be in Hawaii for several months. I don't know if the lady was from Hawaii or going there on vacation or what, but anyway, so they were sharing that story. And then they shared another story of a woman, a young woman who had cancer and wasn't going to be able to have a baby and the miracle story of her getting that her, and her husband to have a child. So anyway, I was just watching those and I was thinking about, you know, so many of us, our moms are gone and it's so hard and we miss them. And, um, you know, what I, what I want to do is celebrate and remember my mom, but do something in her honor and, and do something for someone else. And I want to remember all the, you know, so many women in my own life who have really made a difference for my life. Um, they have the moms of my life are gone. They're all gone. My mom and Lisa and um, my Aunt Betty. Um, Aunt Betty's gone this year. That's the first year my cousin to, cousins will have without her here for Mother's Day. And my, cousin, my aunt... Uh, Rosemary, too, who left in February, and her daughter, Caroline. Uh, so, but you know, it doesn't matter how long your mom's gone, you still miss her. And um, 
I'm just thinking about my mom and missing her tonight. So it's okay. I'll have good memories about her this week. Think about all the great Mother's Days we had together. And I would say to you, if you, uh, you know, you, your mom, the ones of you being on here, I don't know that any of you have your mom still around, but, you know, if you have have good friends that make a difference in your lives, celebrate them, um, and be nice to yourself for Mother's Day, okay? Give, uh, give yourself a pat on the back and um, treat yourself good and... Uh, you know, there's so many women that make such a difference in everybody's lives. And some of them are moms, some of them are stepmoms, and some of them are um, teachers who weren't able to have kids, but are moms to a lot of different, you know. And so um, I just think it's important to celebrate and give thanks for God creating us uh, and for the gifts of our own moms and remembering them and honoring them with our lives this week so so um oh they named the baby delta betty i didn't hear that oh i missed they must have been on delta airlines <laughs> sorry i didn't know they named the baby sorry i didn't know they named the baby that was born on the flight to hawaii delta that is just too sweet wow They'll never forget, she'll never forget that flight, I'll tell you. Because they said she didn't know she was pregnant. Oh, my gosh. I can't, I cannot even imagine. Can you? I, can, I just, I just can't. Um, but it reminds me, um, so when we did our internships eons ago in Tucson, Arizona, uh, we were at two different churches, and David was really good friends with the organist at his church, and we stayed in touch for a long time with them. Well, she was she was divorced at the time, had a little girl, and wound up getting remarried to somebody from the church. And uh, one night they were at home, and they, he had two kids, and she had a daughter, and they weren't trying to have children. And one night they were on the bed, and her stomach started, her abdomen started moving. And they were like, what in the world? And she was pregnant, and they had no idea. They had no idea, so... You know, I think it's around, what, 16 to 18 weeks that you start to feel the baby kick. So she had been pregnant for almost four and a half months and didn't know she was pregnant and having a baby. And uh, they they have to have a, t has to be a mid, probably 15, 16 years old. I have to see if we can look up Brenda and I think they're still in Arizona. See if we can find them. So it's neat though, you know, those stories are great. I mean, although I would say... Wow, to not know you're going to be a mom and then all of a sudden you're a mom. I mean, I just, wow, that just blows me out of the water. That would be unbelievable. So, um, so we want to, okay, so prayer wise, starting my May list, um, we want to, I know Sarah continues to need prayers and I know Gail could use them. They both have had, um, where they had not had struggled with taste and smell and, some other issues um, from, well, Gail's, well, I don't know, but they've had they've had them for the last several weeks after they got their their vaccines. Um, I don't know if that's what caused it. And Gail, of course, had COVID, and so she's had problems on and off, I think, since she had COVID. So, so we want to lift up Gail and Sarah. Paula, don't know what's going on with your health, but we want to pray for you. Um, I'm going to pray for my friends Tom and Deb uh, just for help for them and for answers for Tom's health. He's really struggled, had some very, very difficult uh, times since he had had this stroke and uh, what they believe is encephalitis. And um, it's really been a lot on Deb. And I know she's doing the best she can, but I know it's really been a lot on her. Um, also pray for, uh, Jamie, who I know, um, who is also dealing with cancer, uh, herself. Um, we pray for the end of school. The end of school is coming. Pray this is National Teachers Week and National Nurses Week, both the same week. Two great help, helping professions. So we give thanks for all of our teachers, all of our nurses, 
Um, I'm thank so, so thankful for my boys' teachers. Um, I'm going to pray for seniors. I know Samuel is studying, going to study tonight. He has his final project for music theory due tomorrow. He has a, I think he has his final test in Spanish too. This is really his last week of classes. He goes for his AP test in math, music theory next week, and he finishes his two college classes next next week too. So, but this is the last week that he goes to class it, that I know. So, a lot of seniors all over the place, uh, finishing up, getting ready to uh, put on their cap and gowns in the next month, month and a half, because I know with family in California, it's later there. They usually don't graduate till mid-June. Um, ours is until May 27th. So um, anyway, uh, so for all the seniors, and thanks for teachers, thanks for nurses. We couldn't do it without you. You make such a big difference in all of our lives, and we thank you for helping us and for being there for us and seeing us through so many things. So, um, so grateful for both groups of uh, people tonight. Um, let's see. I'm looking to see if there's anything else I have right now. Um, oh, good news. I talked to Connie and Charlie today, Connie Klompenstein and Charlie. And Charlie got news from his uh, orthopedist that he's doing fabulous and he's doing just excellent. And so we, um, we give thanks for him at doing so well and they're doing so great that they'll be able to go for Connie's grandson graduating from high school in Indiana. So that was really good news to hear tonight. And Charlie said, oh sure, be sure to tell everybody, um, you know, that I'm doing great. He's going to be doing some physical therapy, but he's, he's doing really wonderful. And we pray for Sharon and Harry for safe travel. Um, they are going, I, I can't remember if they've left yet or are going today. Uh, they are going to help, uh, I think it's Sharon's sister and brother-in-law. Her brother-in-law was, or may, no, I think it's Sharon's brother, Sharon's brother. And he has health problems, but his wife got hurt in a moment and broke her pelvis and something else. And now she can't take care of him. So they're going up for a couple of weeks to help them out and be there for them. So we pray for Sharon and Harry safe travels. And we pray for Sharon's brother and sister-in-law just for um, things to work out and there to be help for them with their health and all that they're dealing with. So, so we pray for them as well. Um, that's it that I know for prayer requests tonight. If you have any or you know anyone that needs prayer, it can be a confidential. I do have one, just a special intention, if you will lift that up. And Janet, may you have a wonderful celebration with your mom. I'm so glad you're there. I hope you enjoy all your time there. Um, and, but if you have any prayer requests or you just want have a special intention, just let me know that and I will uh, be sure to add that to the list. And as always, I thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, as I said at the beginning, most of you didn't hear me say, um, we will. I will continue to do devotions online Tuesday through Thursday and Friday fun night, but things may start to change in the next month or so. And of course, when I'm gone this summer, I won't do devotions then. But if you have a preference, um, uh, if you, you know, think, uh, a certain night of the week for devotions or two nights or you like it every, you know, like we do it now, just let me know. Uh, feedback is always welcome. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I'd rather know what you think than not think. And um, as always, I'm thankful for all of you and I pray that God will bless you to be a blessing to others. Go get your shot if you haven't gotten it, just for protection for yourself and for others. And thank you as always just for taking your time to be with me. Um, I'm very grateful for that. And I will be back tomorrow night and I will look for you to join me tomorrow night. And uh, may God give you a good night's rest and a great day tomorrow. And for those of you who watch it tomorrow, may God bless you with a wonderful Wednesday. Stay, stay dry. I think we still have the chance of rain on Wednesday here in Georgia. Um, so just uh, do your best in the rain and stay safe and stay dry. In April... Sending you love, sending love to everybody. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as I said at the beginning, which I don't think anybody heard me say, may the fourth be with you. I'm a big Star Wars fan. I always have been. I love it, love it, love it. And it's May the 4th. So as we say, I've got my, you probably didn't see me, but I got my Star Wars shirt on from Rogue One, which was actually, well, I won't even explain to you. Unless, if you're into Star Wars, you know what it is. If it's not, you don't, and then you won't care. So, all right, everybody, have a great night. See you tomorrow. Take care. Good night.